Ever wondered why Marco Polo holds a significant place in history? This 13th century explorer and merchant is celebrated for his remarkable contributions to the world as we know it. Although he wasn't the first European to discover China or the regions of Asia, his real value lies in his documentation. His book, The Travels of Marco Polo, is a treasure trove of his observations and experiences during his 24-year-long journey across China and East Asia. His vivid descriptions of the East, its culture, and its greatness were the first of their kind. More importantly, Marco Polo's writings paved the way for the European trade movement with the East, stimulating trade and cultural exchange between the East and the West in a way that was previously inconceivable. It's safe to say that his impact was profound and far-reaching. Now let's dive into the fascinating life journey of Marco Polo. Marco Polo, the famed explorer, was born in Venice to a family of merchants. His early life was nestled in the heart of this bustling Italian city, where the air was thick with tales of distant lands and exotic goods. His family, renowned traders, played a significant part in shaping his curiosity and thirst for discovery. His father and uncle were seasoned travelers, their stories of an extended trip to China, brimming with encounters with the famous Mongol ruler, Kublai Khan, sparked a flame in young Marco's heart. These tales of the East, its grandeur, culture, and untapped trading potential, were his bedtime stories, his lessons, and his inspiration. For Marco, these narratives were more than just stories, they were a roadmap to his future, a future filled with adventure and discovery. With this background, Marco Polo was set for a life of adventure. The great journey of Marco Polo began when he was still a young man. With a spirit of adventure inherited from his merchant father and uncle, he was ready to embrace the unknown. His family, renowned merchants in Venice, were planning a second expedition to the east, to the lands of China, ruled by the mighty Kublai Khan. Marco was to accompany them on this journey, a decision that would shape the course of his life and etch his name into the annals of history. To prepare for the journey the family made a difficult but necessary decision. They liquidated their business, transforming their wealth into a form that was both more portable and more valuable. The family sought to trade precious items that were light in weight but heavy in worth, perfect for the long journey ahead. The plan was to travel from Venice to the port of Hormuz, skirting the dangerous deserts and valleys of Asia. From Hormuz, they would board ships destined for China, but destiny had other plans. The Polo family had to adapt, showing their resilience and determination, qualities that Marco would come to embody throughout his life. The journey was not without its hardships. The Polo family had to traverse rugged terrains, brave harsh weather, and navigate the complex cultural and political landscapes of the regions they passed through. They met with various tribes, encountered different cultures, and witnessed the wonders and antiquities of lands previously unknown to them. Despite these challenges, the anticipation of the journey powered their resolve. The allure of the unknown, the promise of discovery, and the potential of trade with the East fueled their spirit. Their journey was not just a physical one but also a journey of the mind and spirit driven by curiosity and a thirst for understanding. The journey was set, the stage was ready, and this marks the beginning of Marco Polo's legendary travels. His experiences would not only change his life, but also forever alter the way the West perceived the East, opening a new chapter in the history of global trade and cultural exchange. The journey began from Jerusalem and led to northern Persia. A voyage of sights, sounds and experiences that would forever change the course of history. Marco Polo, the young explorer from Venice, was about to etch his name in the annals of time. As they journeyed through the heartlands of Persia Marco was enthralled by the mighty castles that dotted the landscape. These formidable fortresses belonged to a shadowy group known as the Assassins. They were a sect of warriors, shrouded in mystery and feared for their deadly precision. Marco was intrigued by their way of life and their military prowess, and he wrote extensively about them in his accounts. Interestingly it was Marco Polo who introduced the term Assassin into Latin literature. Derived from the Persian word Hashashin, which referred to these secretive warriors, the term assassin would come to be associated with stealthy killers, a testament to the impact of Marco's writings. Their journey through Persia was a tapestry of encounters and experiences. They observed the rich cultural heritage, the bustling bazaars, the towering mountains, and the expansive deserts. Every sight, every sound was a new story, a new chapter in their great journey. But their journey was not without its challenges. Upon reaching the southern port of Hormuz, 
they discovered that the ships they intended to take to China had weak structures. The vessels were not fit for the long and perilous voyage that lay ahead. They had to make a difficult decision. The sea route, which they had initially planned for, was no longer an option. They had to reroute their travels and continue their journey by land. The change in plans meant a longer journey, fraught with more dangers and uncertainties. But Marco Polo, his father and his uncle were determined. They had embarked on this journey with a purpose and they would see it through, no matter what. The journey was far from over, as they had to reroute their travels due to weak ship structures. The next leg of their journey would take them across the vast landscapes of Asia, all the way to the far reaches of China. Marco Polo's great journey was just beginning. The rerouted journey took Marco Polo from Persia to China, a journey that lasted three long years. This was no ordinary voyage. The route, though long and arduous, was a path of enlightenment, an open book of the world's wonders and hazards. Marco Polo, the young Venetian explorer along with his family, braved the odds, traversing through unfamiliar landscapes, meeting different tribes, and experiencing a myriad of cultures. The journey was fraught with challenges. From the rugged mountains of northern Persia to the vast deserts of Central Asia, the Polo family journeyed through some of the harshest terrains on Earth. Each step was a fight for survival. They battled extreme weather conditions, navigated through treacherous routes, and faced potential threats from hostile tribes. Yet, amidst the hardship, there was a world of discovery. Marco Polo was a keen observer. He took notes of the tribes they encountered, the unique customs they observed and the rich history embedded in every corner of their journey. These experiences would later form the foundation of his famous book, The Travels of Marco Polo. In the heart of Central Asia, they came across the Silk Road, the ancient trade route linking East and West. This was a living testament to the bustling trade that had been thriving for centuries. Marco Polo's meticulous documentation of the Silk Road would later play a pivotal role in expanding Europe's knowledge of the East and stimulating the trade movement. The journey, though strenuous, was a transformative expedition. The young Marco Polo, who embarked on this voyage as a novice explorer, was now a seasoned traveler, his mind filled with stories of the East, ready to be shared with the Western world. Finally, after years of travel, Marco Polo reached China, ready to meet King Kublai Khan. This marked the end of one journey and the beginning of another. China, with its rich culture and advanced civilization, was a new world waiting to be explored. The experiences that awaited him would further cement his legacy as one of the greatest explorers in history. Marco Polo's arrival in China marked a new chapter in his life. After a long and arduous journey, Marco Polo finally met with the great King Kublai Khan, the grandson of the infamous Genghis Khan. The king was fascinated by the young Venetian and his tales of the Western world. Recognizing Marco's astuteness and curiosity, the king appointed him as an emissary of the Yuan dynasty, sending him to explore and document the far reaches of his vast kingdom. Marco Polo spent nearly two decades in China. He traveled extensively, marveling at the grandeur and sophistication of the Chinese civilization. He was particularly impressed by their advanced technologies like paper money and coal-fired heating, which were unknown in Europe at the time. He meticulously documented his observations and experiences, providing the West with the first comprehensive account of the Eastern world. However, after nearly 24 years in the East, a longing for home began to stir in Marco Polo. He yearned to return to Venice, to his family, and to the familiar streets of his birthplace. When a golden opportunity presented itself, facilitating a safe return voyage for Marco and his family they seized it. They journeyed back to Venice by sea, navigating through the Indian Ocean, the Arabian Sea, and finally the Mediterranean. Their return was fraught with perils, including pirate attacks and devastating storms, but they persevered. After a long and treacherous journey they finally set foot on Venetian soil in the year 1395. The tales of Marco Polo's adventures in the East captivated his fellow Venetians. His accounts were compiled into a book, The Travels of Marco Polo, which became a seminal text in the annals of exploration. His vivid descriptions of the East opened up a whole new world for the Western civilization, paving the way for future explorers and merchants. And so, Marco Polo's legendary journey, lasting nearly 24 years, came to an end leaving behind a legacy that would inspire generations of explorers and merchants.